Well guys, this time it seems like my grandmother has decided she wants to move out of her old ghost town. And there's a couple old cars there, nothing special, but uh, they gotta get moved here anyways, so you know what? This is the perfect opportunity to get the old trailer revamped and uh, the old truck revamped, so we'll give the whole issue a once over and then we'll hit the road. I think we just need to give it a paint job so that Johnny Law leaves us alone a little bit better. Uh, maybe just check that the winch still works. Definitely get another spare tire, and I got a new A-frame for the coupler so we can put that on and it'll be nice and secure on there. Maybe a couple safety chains, and uh, yeah, that should be about it. I want to uh, put some doors back on here. This one, as you can see, is not uh, currently attached. The other ones were welded up years ago. They're just a couple of tack welds on there, or stitch welds, or whatever you want to call that. They all have piano hinges, and I'd like to get those back to functioning operation. As you may notice, this is missing. So we're gonna have to come up with some solution for that. I think I might have one. And here it is. I got some metal here that I can use to just... I'm just kidding with you. I'm not gonna wreck those signs. Here we go. No going back now. So I'm only drilling these out to a pilot hole size for the moment because I will take these and go use them on the trailer and that will allow me to uh, just transfer this hole onto the trailer just using this as a guide and that'll make it a lot easier. So here's where we're at. The trailer is as good as it's going to get for now. I put a new tire on this side. I got the new coupler on the front. We got the paint job on so the cops keep happy. It's like a minimum 30 foot or 30 mile an hour paint job, but that's yeah, not too bad. We're still running magnetic trailer lights. I really wanted to get dedicated ones on, but that didn't end up happening. And I didn't get to spray painting the inside of the fenders, but yeah, I think for now it'll be fine. So I guess there's nothing left to do but hit the road. And you just don't haul in Western Canada with a stick and a trailer without this logo for a YouTube channel at least. So thanks for sending me that, Mark. Well, this right here was plan A, but I'm looking at the calendar and realizing I don't have time to make this road worthy. I can't pull that off. So I guess we're gonna have to go to plan B. And plan B is Steve. Steve is a Ford Halfton with a nine inch, a 351 Windsor, and a really tall set of gears. Really not what you want to pull a trailer, but he does have a four speed, so that's why he's elected. So our first drama of the trip, I just put this bearing in before we went, because the old one was wrecked. And uh, we get to the gas station here in Moose Jaw. It was about a half hour drive for us. And uh, this thing is hot. It's too hot to drive. So a Ford 9 inch has four bolts that hold the axle in. So if you break an axle shaft, you don't actually lose your wheel. And so the four bolts, I'm loosening them off. I'm hoping that these are uh, just too snug down. And if I loosen them off and then just snug them up to where it's a little bit looser, Maybe that is our issue, that the bearing's running hot. And we'll see what it's like down the road. We got it adjusted, I think correctly this time, so we're gonna take a drive up the road and see if it's still hot. miles down the road checked it it's still hot so we're gonna limp it home see if there's something else we can figure out I know there's one thing with the uh, little bushing behind it that was a little bit different with the new one so I'm wondering if we have a clearance issue to the axle housing 
So after limping the truck home, we realized, you know, it's a weekend. We're not likely going to be able to get another bearing in in time. So if we wanted to make that trip, we had to come up with a new plan. And here it is, another small block powered half ton. Well, things have taken an ugly turn, but hopefully it'll make it. So we took the Chevy all the way down to my grandma's house and soon thereafter got working on the first car. This is one of the cars we're dealing with today. This is a 76 Oldsmobile, full size two door. So upon a closer investigation, we discovered that the car was inhabited by coons. And at that point we decided we would get the other car ready to go. And then at the end of the week when we came to move my grandmother, we would just move the Oldsmobile at that time. The other car we were moving was a mid-70s Plymouth Volari wagon. We obviously had to put a few wheels on it because it had been sitting for many years. And we also had to get a brake drum pulled off, but other than that, it was pretty easy. The old Plymouth Volaris and Dodge Aspens and all the other Mopars that were in that family, they have suspension that is a pretty good swap onto the old Ford pickups, and in this case, Mercury. You used to do that before the Crown Victorias became the gold standard, and uh, they were pretty decent swap. This can literally save you hours doing this stuff. And a car that rolls is a lot easier to pull on the trailer than a car that doesn't. If you're doing this on a front axle with the spindle, I usually use a nut, but this is just the axle shaft, it'll be fine. See what I mean? Literally can knock hours off your project. of a cost-effective funnel right there. Basically, you're trying to limp it off. But despite its hot rear end, that Chevy did actually make it all the way home with the Polari wagon. So I'd really rather use that Ford for moving this other car. And so I think what our plan is going to be is to find a, another axle shaft around here in another truck that has a decent bearing on it and swap that and, and just avoid having to deal with new crappy parts. So after checking a couple of axles, I finally pulled an axle shaft that had the correct bearing that was in good shape. So if you've ever heard that old saying, robbing Peter to pay Paul, this is exactly what that means. <laughs> You're just taking it off the other one. It's good to have parts trucks, I tell you what. Well, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a little groove right back in here. And so to clean that out of all the metal shavings, I'm using Q-tips. I could probably use one of those myself. Lube it up! So we swapped out the axle shaft and uh, we're going to take it for a quick test drive and if it seems okay I guess then we'll just have to hit the road. So we headed down to move my grandmother and immediately went to the Oldsmobile, thinking that maybe if the raccoons were moved that'd be great, and if they weren't, maybe them seeing us would inspire them to move. Time to move! Come on guys! 
plenty of field around you. Come on. I think it's a good thing that that trunk lid didn't open. Time to move. Oh, look at you. There you are. Hello, little dude. Why hasn't mother moved you? So we got back to the Oldsmobile after a few very long but successful days of moving. And we immediately started working on the car, which just woke them up. We couldn't find them, but they were in the trunk. So then we decided we had to come up with a new plan. So this is the new plan. I don't know what number that is by now, but it's a big one. Uh, this is basically a van that my uh, dad's buddy got for free from another place that uh, I guess they're going to do some horse trading over it. But basically, it's a load to put on the trailer and not go home empty-handed. It needs a little bit of work, but I think we can handle it. It's supposed to be really heavy, but I think that old trailer and truck should manage it. And if not, at least it'll be an interesting story. So I guess we're going to get started on this now. We don't have any keys for it, so it's stuck in park. So I just took the drive shaft off to make it roll a little easier. And uh, we'll check that brakes are loose, throw as many good tires on it as we can find, and then we'll see if our little 5,000 pounder winch will actually pull this behemoth up on the trailer, because this thing is really heavy. Take two. like 20 minutes from home so we're gonna have to take the spare off of the van that was originally for the truck and throw it on the truck taking the tire back off the van just to get home the last 20 minutes and hopefully it fits out this little hole Get over! Maybe with the drum out we'll have enough space. Oh, shit, we're really there. Hey, we got a pad. <laughs> Maybe with the drum out of the way. The mud flap out of the way. Yes, yes, yes! I got it! Woo! Boo bar. Table for one. Ooh, she's poking you through. So we made it home. Praise the Lord, right? This old 
truck and trailer are definitely a little overloaded, but you know what? You make do with the tools you have at the time you have them. Uh, yeah, I think that it performed pretty well, all things considered. Obviously, the Chevy pulled the Volari just fine and Danny, that doesn't weigh nothing. As far as the Oldsmobile goes, that'll have to be a separate later video, I suppose. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this sort of content, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, share with friends, all that sort of stuff. And until next time, Godspeed. <laughs>